Thank you for joining us this Friday, the 8th of April. I'm Sophia Mavridis, a market analyst with Bell Direct. Well, as we wrap up March and move through April, we'll provide our end of quarter review and cover what to look out for in the coming months. We'll also cover what may happen if the export ban to Russia extends to the nickel market and events to keep an eye on next week. Now, the Australian share market gained 0.75% in the March quarter. We also saw volatility in global share markets and uncertainty lowering investor confidence. Now, January saw the worst start to the year since 2008, with inflation soaring globally and expectations of rate hikes. The US Fed then lifted rates in March and Australian investors have been anticipating when the RBA will follow. Now, Australia is one of the few share markets around the world in positive territory. The MSCI All Country World Index fell 5.7% for the quarter. The Shanghai Composite Index underperformed down 10.6%. The S&P 500 was down 5% and the ASX 200 performed well, rising 0.7% to 7,500 points for the quarter. Now, the Aussie market also saw energy and utility sectors as standouts, while the tech sector has been the worst performer of the year, down 14%, and that's because of the sell-off in tech companies globally. However, it's important to remember that tech only accounts for 3% of the Australian share market. We also had reporting season in February, with most domestic companies reporting strong rebounds and improved business conditions following the lockdowns. Uh, We also had billions of dollars paid out in dividends and the budget was delivered with a focus on fiscal repair. Concerns about the Russia-Ukraine war intensified further. Now, while there's much uncertainty around the conflict, it's important to note that Australia's trade links to Ukraine and Russia are relatively small. We're an exporter of net energy, materials and agriculture goods. So the higher commodity prices are likely to see an expansion in Australia's terms of trade and could have a positive impact on growth. Now, the conflict has primarily impacted the prices of oil, coal, aluminium, gas and nickel, all major exports for Russia. Now, let's consider nickel, which is one Russian export not yet impacted by sanctions. Russia produces 7% of the global supply of mined nickel and 4.6% of global production of primary nickel. Now, since Russia Russia invaded Ukraine at the end of February, nickel prices have soared higher, and this is because of the high demand for nickel as it's used in batteries uh, in electric vehicles. Now, unlike other exports and commodities, the nickel market hasn't been targeted. However, markets fear the loss of so much supply. But there are other large nickel players outside of Russia. So if sanctions or an export ban cut off supply from Russia, the top nickel producing nations could escalate production to replace to replace Russian supply and help backfill any deficits in the short term. Now, the fifth largest uh, nickel producing region is Western Australia. Now, in October last year, BHP announced it uh, it had produced the first nickel sulfite crystals from its uh, Nickel West sulfite plant in in WA. And meanwhile, 10 nickel mines are expected to open in the Philippines this year. So you may want to watch stocks like BHP, Nickel Mines, NIC, uh, Poseidon Nickel, POS, and Western Areas, WSA. Now, on another note, the RBA held the cash rate this week at its record low of 0.1%. Now, as inflation remains persistent, a rise in interest rates is still expected this year, and this may also require a transition from quantitative easing to quantitative tightening. Now, this may also see a fall in the prices of stocks that are sensitive to interest rates, such as tech stocks and other industries with higher levels of debt. So moving forward, we may expect a a cautious uh, investment environment in these sectors. Now, moving into the next quarter, as economic growth stabilizes while inflation moves higher, we may see rising risks of stagflation and therefore continued uncertainty in the investment environment. Now, this could weigh down on earnings forecasts this year, and we expect to see a move from value stocks uh, to growth stocks as EPS growth becomes more difficult to come across. Now, taking a look at the local market this week, the ASX 200 is down 0.7% Monday to Thursday, with utilities gaining the most up 3%. 
Energy, consumer staples and financials are also in the green. The biggest mover on the ASX 200 this week was Pendle Group, PDL, which, uh, which is, and this was after they received a $2.4 billion takeover offer from Perpetual, PPT. And Perpetual is a Bell Potter buy stock with a price, price target of $42.80. And Magellan Financial MFG has rebounded after being heavily sold uh, earlier this year. Meanwhile, miners AVZ Minerals and Liners Rare Earths have dropped the most this week. And the most traded stocks by Bell Direct clients this week were Temple and Webster, Core Lithium, Champion Iron and Sayona Mining. Clients also bought into Novonics and Pilbara, Pil Pilbara Minerals while took profits from Adrometa Metals, BHP, uh, CBA and Fortescue. And as for economic data to look out for next week, business confidence data will be released on Tuesday. And this will show us which industries have strengthened in confidence since the decline in uh, cases of the Omicron variant. Consumer confidence will be released on Wednesday, which will show us how consumers are feeling following the floods in Queensland and New South Wales the expectations of higher interest rates and inflation, as well as the ongoing uh, Russia-Ukraine conflict. And lastly, on Thursday, uh, Thursday will be important because of the announcement of the unemployment rate for March. Now note that the outlook for the labour market remains positive with unemployment expected to fall below 4% by the end of this year and wage growth to accelerate. Now that's all we have time for this week. I'm Sophia Mavridis with Bell Direct. Have a great day and happy trading.